Welcome to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Free-flowing talk with a charismatic, down-to-earth host. Join Dean as he interviews and chats freely with his guests, ranging from superstar athletes to politicians, industry titans, and everyday folk with fascinating life stories. Dean educates, entertains, and most of all, touches people's lives. You're listening to the Dean Blackman Show, live from Long Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dean Blackman Show. Uh, beautiful, beautiful winter afternoon here on the North Shore of Long Island. So talk at Long Island, New York, uh, remotely across uh, the United States in L.A. is my guest that's with me is Christina Robinson. She's 19, best known for her role on the hit Showtime series Dexter. As Aster Bennett for eight seasons, she booked the role while living in Orlando and then moved to L.A. with her family and twin sister, Courtney, to pursue her dream of acting. She was nominated for SAG Awards twice, Screen Actors Guild's Awards. She had numerous other films and commercials over the years. Most recently, she filmed the lead on the upcoming movie, Andrews Manor, which is a psychiatric thriller expected to be released in March of 2017. She has a few other projects in discussion and is eager for the future and new opportunities. Christina loves acting, every part of it, and is currently pursuing school at Santa Monica College, hoping to land at USC Film of School in a couple of years. I want to welcome Christina Robinson to The Dean Blackman Show. Christina, how are you Hi, today? Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm very happy to have you today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm pretty cold, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cold out in L.A.? Yeah, I'm actually not in L.A. currently. I'm on, um, I was doing a road trip with a friend for the past couple of days, and I ended up right now in San Simon. I'm at an Airbnb right now, and it's pretty chilly. <laughs> Well, I was a little, you know, this is, uh, you know, I've been doing this, uh, I was in the consumer products industry for almost three decades, and this has been a dream and uh, a passion for me for a long time, and it's finally happened to do this radio show right here from my home yeah. in talk at Long Island, and, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, knowing that I was going to have a star on the show today, uh, one of the few times in my life that I get nervous, I was nervous today. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, hello. It, yeah, I w it was a little. I was a little nervous today uh, getting on the show with you. So I, I would like to just, uh, you know, I'd like to know what it's like uh, being so young. Uh, that right. you, you started your career. I mean, not even not even the career yet, but uh, you know, I had an opportunity uh, to communicate with mom over the last couple of days. That uh, I think you started with acting when you were six or seven years old. I mean, there was an opportunity. You did a McDonald's commercial. You've got to share a few, two or three minutes with just sharing with me and my audience. How, mm -hmm. as as such a youngster, how did how did all that happen and get and evolve? Yeah, so um, I have a twin sister, as you know, and when we were younger, um, you know, we're six, seven years old. We don't really know what we want to do, and my sister was actually the one to tell my parents, you know, mom, like, I want to be on TV, like, I want to be an actor, and so, you know, my parents kind of took the initiative of, you know, getting us into acting classes and submitting us for... Um, little things online, open casting calls. Cause I mean, we didn't have an agent or anything yet. And my sister, um, got the audition for Dexter actually. And I, uh, we had lived in Florida at the time and I went with her, um, to the audition cause we lived in Orlando and the audition was in Miami. So it was a four hour drive and we went to the audition. She did it, you know, came in, came out, and we were the only ones in the waiting room at the time. And the producer um, had asked me, you know, like, do you want to audition? Because I was just kind of sitting there, but I was, you know, same age range that they were looking for. And my mom was kind of just tapping my shoulder, like, do you want to, you know, like, do it. And I just said, okay. And so they handed me, I mean, I'm seven years old. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and 
they handed me a little script and um, I auditioned and got it. And so at the time, I really didn't understand what it meant. It was just like, uh, oh, cool, I'm going to be on TV. You know, it was just kind of very simple. Um, And then as the show grew into something a lot bigger than that, I was kind of put into this position of um, having to, I don't know, just very like mature early, you know, because I was constantly surrounded by adults and constantly surrounded by this business. And, um, you know, I loved it. I have no regrets. And I, uh, you know, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm focusing on currently. And um, it's a different, I don't know how to kind of like say it, but it's um, a different type of life than you'd imagine, you know, like you're kind of trying to balance, you know, friends with work and family and school and everything like all at once, you know, and, um, you just, you learn and you take it day by day. Wow. Uh, it's, it's amazing how, uh, how you've, uh, in the short time I've gotten to know you and even speaking to, uh, your mother, that mm-hmm. it's amazing how, uh, only at 19 years of age that you've managed to keep your head on and stay very grounded in a town where that is not an easy task in Hollywood. How, yeah. do, you, how do you do that? You know, it's uh, you learn, like I said, you learn as you go. You know, I have definitely had my fair share of moments where I question the people I, I'm around or. Um, something that I'm doing and I don't know, I'm constantly analyzing my life and what can benefit myself and what can benefit others. And, um, I don't know, I took a lot of acting classes growing up and just really kind of dove head first into this industry because this is what I wanted to go into. You know, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's a mindset, I guess. Well, why don't we do this? I think it's important for the audience to go back a little bit in time. I mean, going back in time, you're 19 years old. It's just remarkable. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think it's important to just set the stage that for mm-hmm. anyone that doesn't know that for seven or eight years, this hit series called Dexter, it was mm-hmm. just a phenomenon. I mean, Dexter yeah. was, an, Dex, for my audience, Dexter was an American television crime drama mystery series that was aired on Showtime from October 2006 to September 2013. I mean, you were, you were, I mean, I've got to, you've got to get into a little bit more. I mean, I know, I know Courtney, your sister was, uh, had an opportunity there, but I mean, Mm -hmm. I mean, at that point, did you, um, uh, this series, this this audition before you got it, you did not have an agent at that time. No. Wow, just no, remar- yeah. just remarkable. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you were. I mean, at that at that point, you were playing with the. What was it like for you to uh, finally get that role? And you were playing. I mean, uh, you were playing with the actor, the legendary actor Michael Hall, who plays the lead role in Dexter. I mean, that was huge. I mean, you you were how old at this time? Yeah, I mean, I booked the show when I was seven. Okay. So, I mean, <laughs> Mike Michael Hall is a legend. He's playing the role, the lead role is Dexter Morgan. He's won Golden Globe and Screen Actors Guild, uh, uh, Guild Awards. Uh, and you're playing uh, with Michael, Michael Hall. I mean, what was that? Uh, what was that experience like on the show? He's such an amazing actor. You know, he really puts his mind and um, he do, he walks around basically as his character when we're, he's doing, you know, very serious scenes. And I learned so much from him and also um, Jennifer Carpenter, who plays Deborah on the show. Um, they're just amazing. You know, to me, they're not these big, you know, like famous people. Like they were kind of my family growing up, you know, like on the show and they're uh, like it, Dexter honestly was like just this one big family, you know, and I just happened to have the privilege of growing up on that show and being a part of that. You know, it blows my mind to think about it now because I'm doing other projects and, you know, I talk to other actors and um, I tell them the story of basically how I got it. And, you know, some people are out in L.A. for 10 years and maybe do one commercial, you know. 
I mean, and, Christina, am I am I correct uh, that you were nominated for Screen Actors Guild Award for outstanding performance uh, in a drama series? Uh, you were uh, nominated as a Young Artist Award for best performance in a TV series, recurring young actress. I mean, that yeah. was 2009, 2010, 2008, 9, 11. I mean, uh, just uh, just some just uh, just uh, just a great story. Yeah, I, it's crazy to think about now. You, you know, know I, like I remember the SAG Awards, and it was just just mind blowing whole like situation. You know, like I had a dress custom made for myself, and I remember just walking the carpet with all these huge stars, and I was running into like Meryl Streep and Betty White, like on the carpet, and it was just so like inspiring. And man, it was crazy <laughs> listen we have uh some similarities in our families that uh i want to discuss here or that a little bit here i mean here this uh this couldn't have been an easy situation for the family that you were you were competing against your twin sister uh, courtney for uh, yeah. for an audition mm -hmm. is courtney a fraternal or identical twin um she's fraternal we were fraternal twins but it's so funny because when you look at me and you look at my sister, some people don't even think that we're sisters, <laughs> let alone twins. Um, it's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. That's that's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I have I have similarities like that. Uh, what uh, my family uh, there are uh, my parents, the two sets of twin. There were two sets of twin boys in my family, and then came Dean. Hmm. Uh, okay. there's, uh, there's an oldest set of twins, Neil and Brian, uh, they're identical twins. Three years later, uh, my parents had Ross and Steve who are fraternal twins. My parents had four in diapers at the same time. Wow. And, and then four years later, I broke the bet. I was supposed to be a third set of twins and it ended up just being Dean. <laughs> you broke the cycle. So when you talk about competition and family similarities and, uh, you know, we have twins in our family and not only do we have twins, but uh, we all ended up working together, forming a company named after twins, Twin Lab, that sold Love vitamins, it. minerals and nutritional supplements all around the world. And... Um, you know, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot more. One day, I could have uh, you, mom, and your sister Courtney on the show, and I'm sure there's a whole separate show we could talk about uh, family and uh, oh. twins and uh, what it's like uh, to be uh, pursuing same interests and same businesses. Yeah, you know, it's a constant. It almost feels like a constant, you know, competition in a way, even though it isn't. But like, <clears throat> at least for my sister and I. <clears throat> for my sister and I, it was, a, uh, you know, same friends, same auditions, same, you know, like just everything was always like we were almost battling out for everything, you know, but that's getting more into the twin life and twins don't even run in my family. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so. uh, my mother, uh, you know, if you get a chance, I told your mother that you got to listen when I launched my show. Back in uh, July 26, I thought it was appropriate to have my soon-to-be 90-year-old mom as my first guest on my show. So it was show number one. You guys should uh, listen to my mom's show. So far, it's uh, she's my biggest fan and, and highest-rated viewed show so far to date. Wow. So, yeah, uh, so listen, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to get more into, uh, a little bit more about Dexter. You know, I've got to ask you, um, what was it like with Michael Hall and Jennifer Carpenter helping you to learn how to play drunk for your, <laughs> for your scene where you were <laughs> acting out after your mother's death? I mean, yeah. you, you were, you were only 15 years old at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you were taken aside and given some tips by Michael Hall and Jennifer Carpenter at 15. What was that? If you could share what that experience was like and what took place. Yeah, that's a funny memory. Um, it was a so, yeah, it was the scene um, or it was a couple episodes after, you know, spoiler. Can I spoil it? 
actually. Absolutely. You, know? you, mean, could, hard. you could do yeah. whatever you what you could you could say and do whatever you want. It's my show. You could do whatever you want, Christine. <laughs> yeah, so it was a couple episodes after my mother's death, so my character was not handling it as well as you know, she possibly could have. And I had a scene where I had to, you know, come into the house drunk and um, Michael, who is Dexter, you know, he's kind of, he comes home and is just like, what in the world is going on? And, but for that scene, I had never, you know, I, f- I was 15. I had never had a sip of alcohol in my life. <laughs> and so I just, everyone was telling me like, play drunk. And I was just remember just trying to like slur my words or something. And, um, it just wasn't coming off, you know, as it probably should have. So we were all like, laugh cause everyone was laughing at me. You know, I really had no idea what I was doing. And so Michael and Jennifer, like, um, cause Jennifer wasn't in the scene, but she was on set that day. And so I remember them just like trying to like show me, they took me aside and they were trying to show me like how to kind of like, wobble and like not be able to walk straight and so they were just you know kind of demonstrating like talking drunk to each other and kind of like walking around really out of it and it was just a a really funny moment um wow that must have been that must have been a great experience (laughs) and moment in your in your life yeah I mean but the thing is being on a show like that I have so many memories you know and just moments that just really meant a lot to me like For example, another one with Michael, I was, uh, I remember walking to, um, a food truck that we had on set to make a sandwich and I walk into the food truck and Michael was sitting there like he was making a sandwich too, but he was just singing like at the top of his lungs, some like Broadway show tune. And I walk in and he just like kept singing and like smiled at me and we were like making sandwiches there. And I was just kind of like, I didn't even know he sang, you know? And it's just like, Little things like that, you know, that just like mean a lot and just kind of hit home, you know? Well, I heard you're a pretty good singer. I'm all right. Come on. <laughs> don't be so humble. Come on. I, sing, I heard, I, I heard well. you I heard you're a damn good singer. Thank you. Are we going to hear something? Oof. I wasn't ready for that. Huh? I wasn't ready for that. Well, you have to be ready when you come on my show. I've got a very spontaneous nature show. I know that's pretty fun. Um, I can sing something. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, um, give, you gotta give a little bit something that's a favorite of yours. What am I saying? I did karaoke the other night and I sang um, "ABC" by Michael Jackson. Let's hear it. Okay, I'll give a little. ABC is easy as one, two, three. As simple as do rate me. A, B, C, one, two, three, baby, you and me, girl. Wow. Awesome, man. That was great. <laughs> you Thank were you. awesome. <laughs> I'm telling you, next time you're coming out uh, to the coast here, next time you're out uh, in New York, you're mm-hmm. going you're gonna to come in studio and we're going to do some music. You can do some singing. Yeah, let's do it. I heard you're very talented. That's what I hear. So listen, getting back, that was great. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, there might be there might be some other spontaneous stuff. You got to be ready for that with my show. Uh, I'll one take thing, it. <laughs> one thing that's unique uh, about uh, my show is I like to uh, keep it real, full transparency, uh, very spontaneous, uh, and it's all about chemistry. So uh, yeah. I've I've got to get back to Dexter because I think you're going to remember that one of my favorite actors of all time. Uh, the legendary John Lithgow, just a great actor. I mean, once again, in your youth, I mean, what's it like when John Lithgow came to your trailer during season number five, and here's this John Lithgow, legendary, introducing himself to you and and letting, letting you know that he's honored to be working with you as yeah, uh, you know good. working with you know with you and kids and the kids that made the show of Dexter what once again what was that experience like that was honestly you know pretty crazy <laughs> um i remember i was in my trailer with the boy who plays my little brother on the show and we were just kind of hanging out uh looking over our scripts and you know someone knocks on the door and we thought it was in a- in ad coming to get us for um, rehearsals or something. And 
John Lithgow was there. And I, you know, I was still young. I didn't really know who he was, but my parents did. And so my dad was in, or was it, I think it was either my, I think it was my dad who was in the trailer with me. And, um, you know, we opened the door and he just, um, he just says, you know, I just wanted to say like, I love you guys on the show. Like you guys make this whole family aspect come to life. Like I'm honored to be working with you guys. And I really hope like we can have a lot of fun together. And like, by the way, like I'm John Lithgow and, um, gave us this little speech and it was just like, wow. <laughs> like that was, um, very special to hear. And my dad was freaking out. <laughs> he was freaking out. He couldn't yeah, believe it. Like, I, like, he, was, like, he was keeping it cool, but he was just a big fan. Of John, well, I'm, so. I'm like your dad. I'm having the same reaction. I'm freaking <laughs> out and I'm, I'm a huge fan of John Lithgow. So, uh, it's, uh, it's a great, it's a great story, uh, yeah. to, to be told here on this show. I mean, he, uh, you know, legendary John. And he's so for him, humble for too, him, for you him, know, like he walks around set and it's just kind of very, like he's friends with everyone, you know? I mean, for him to come in and say he's uh, honored to be working with you is pretty special. Yeah. Especially like we're kids, like, you know, some, some people like don't really do that, <laughs> you know, like they don't think to. I've got to, yeah. I've got to ask you that. What was it like once again at a youthful age working on the hit show Dexter working just in this environment? And then you're on the set filming when there is an earthquake in LA. What, oh what was, God. what was that experience? What was that day, that moment for you? That was so scary. So we were in, um, we were actually shooting. I feel like they probably have this on camera somewhere um, because we were shooting a scene and in the soundstage. So, you know, every like you, I'm laying in bed, you know, pretending to be asleep. But when you look up, it's like all these lights and um, walkways and just poles and pipes and stuff um, like right above us. And like, you don't really think much about it. And Michael is in the scene and he's singing us, um, like a lullaby while we're sleeping. And all of a sudden we just hear, like, it almost sounded like, um, one of the walls in the sound stages was being moved, you know, just kind of pushed and everything just started shaking. And so, you know, um, everyone kind of started standing up and was like, what's going on? And then everything started really shaking violently and everyone just starts screaming like get out get out like everybody like um like exit exit and oh my the <laughs> what's actually really sad um Preston who pleased my little brother and I were just kind of laying in bed we didn't like I honestly didn't comprehend what was going on and everyone's running out of there and <laughs> Preston and I are sitting in our beds like what do we do? Like, what's, I don't, what's going on? You know, it almost sounded like something was breaking. Like we didn't really understand there was an earthquake going on. Um, and then we hear, cause at that point everyone had run out of the room, you know, like they thought we were following them and we hear our, uh, our dads cause, um, our dads normally took us to set at the front door. Like, where's the kids? And one of the ADs came running back in and grabbed us out of bed and Rust just outside, but uh, that was a very scary day. <laughs> it must have been frightening. Yeah, because um, when we're looking up and like basically all the lights and stuff that are hanging above us are just swaying, mm. and all the walls are just swaying, you know. And it was, just, I mean, earthquakes in general are so scary because it's just like you're not in control of the world. Like everything around you is moving, you know. Okay, so I've got to so I've got to ask you another spontaneous question um, uh, that's uh, that's uh, related to uh, Dexter. Can I mm -hmm. can I can I ask you a spontaneous question? Yeah. Okay, I got to ask you, and I want you to be honest to to me and and the audience uh, that uh, what you always took to cast parties at the end of each season. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So my thing was starting season one, I would actually take, um, a body part, like a plastic body part 
to all the rap parties and I would have all the cast and crew and producers and everyone sign it. So I have um, eight different body parts at home. (laughs) (laughs) uh, The signatures from everyone who worked on that season. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. It's just kind of like a, I don't know. It was like we were heading to the first rap party and um, I remember my dad just, I mean, I was really young, but he was just like, why don't we bring like a foot (laughs) in a Sharpie? And it was just kind of like, a, okay, <laughs> like why not? And then it just became a thing. So um, where I, I've got to ask you, what is Christina Robinson like when she is? How would you describe yourself? What you're like when you're off camera? I'm very relaxed. Um, I'm pretty outgoing. You know, I always want to be like talking to people, but in a very like, I don't know. I just like hanging out and getting to know people. Um, I am very, uh, active. I, I currently go to the gym a lot, but I used to ride horses for, what was it? Five years. I played soccer for eight years. Um, I did gymnastics for a little while and I don't know. I just like to be doing things. (laughs) I mean, you you have an unbelievable amount of talents besides the singing. You just mentioned you're a great athlete. Uh, you. you love the surf. I mean, uh, while um, while you were spent a year in Germany, you know, you well, ha- actually um, my sister spent a year in Germany, but my sister and I this past year, uh, we both went backpacking through Europe together Um and explored, you know, Italy, Spain, Greece, um, France, a uh, little bit of Switzerland, and had the adventure of a lifetime. So, so I love traveling. You had a German sister who lived with uh, with your family and was also named Christina. It's my understanding yes, uh, that uh, it was Tina and Christina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I miss her so much. That's yeah. A- so when my twin left, because she was a foreign exchange student over there, I didn't want to be alone. So I was like, why don't, you know, we order a sister for to be here. <laughs> and we, we found um, a really good program. I don't remember the name of it, but we found, we looked through so many different applications um, of people. And I just really connected to this girl who also had my name. Wow. And you also, uh, there was a horse named Zeke for several years. Yeah, I had a, so when I was horseback riding for about five years, um, I had the most wonderful horse ever. He was a black thoroughbred named Zeke and he, I hunter jumped him and had the, uh, it was like a horse is really like your best friend. And what was really cool is with my horseback riding experience, um, I did a horseback riding movie last year and I got to ride horses all day and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, uh, but I hear that, uh, you experienced, uh, two concussions in your lifetime. Once was when your horse Zeke tripped and jumped over you accidentally and you love to play soccer that, uh, you got, uh, hit in the head once with uh, soccer and, and, uh, and had another concussion. Yeah. Concussions are uh, no joke, but. Yeah, I was riding Zeke, um, and we were going over a jump, but he tripped right before the jump. So I like landed on the jump, and he like continued to jump, but his hoof had like hit my head as he was going over. Luckily, I was wearing a helmet, so it wasn't super bad, but it cracked the helmet, <laughs> um, and that uh, put me in a bad place for a second. And then soccer, you know, I mean. Stuff like that happens all the time. Got, or I fell and then somebody kicked my head thinking that it was the ball. So wow. that was wow. fantastic. So in between all this and uh, and singing as well that you fit in, you know, you performed in many events in L.A. Uh, you also found time over the years that you love to surf and, you know, spend summers in San Diego at YMC Surf Camp and in high school. Uh, I, I mean, time management. How'd you fit all this in? Yeah, I mean, my parents were a big part of uh, the time management process. You know, they uh, help schedule everything and keep everything, you know, on track for me. Um, 
and like I respect them so much for doing that. I'm so thankful for everything that they've done because they seriously like I, everyone's parents like mean a lot, you know, but they really did help me and get me to the place that I needed to be. Um, cause I mean, I think about it now, like even just listening to what you're saying, like I, they, I like time management was so huge and growing up, you know, that was basically on my parents. They were driving me around. I don't know how you do it. I mean, once again, you even became even more adventurous in your life that you still took it further and you did snowboarding that, uh, you guys went up to a condo in in big bear and yeah. uh, you love to do that. So, I mean, besides acting, I mean, I mean, it just you, it just goes on and on. Hoas, uh, love of horse, love of animals, snowboarding, singing, surfing, soccer. I mean, is there <laughs> is there anything else I'm missing? I mean, probably. <laughs> you're you're really remarkable. I'm going to I'm going to use that word uh I'm going to use that r- word 100 times today. I've got a I've got a sister-in-law in Freehold, New Jersey that told me way when I first started the first couple of shows. She says each time that I use the word remarkable, she's going to go ahead and and have a drink. Mm. But uh there's a lot of times that I'm going to say remarkable about you because uh it's still unbelievable as we're halfway into this show that uh, you've accomplished so much at the young age of 19. Yeah. Thank you. And still, and still remain, still remain. I mean, just 30 minutes into this show, I've got to say that Christina Robinson is an extremely very humble, gracious and well-grounded role model that I could only imagine uh you know an actress like you and where and who you are that uh you must carry so much responsibility for so much social messages that go on today with technology yeah so uh it's just uh it's just unbelievable so i've got to ask you do you do you have any role models in the acting community I would say I really look up to uh, Jennifer Lawrence, actually. And um, she's a, because the the type of actor that she is, she's very, like, open with herself. Like, she puts herself into so many different roles and pulls it off to the, you know, most extreme situations. And it's just, uh, I don't know, it's inspiring to me. And also... uh, a Meryl Streep. I don't know if you watched on um, the Golden Globes this past week. Yes, I did. But I, I did. I, yeah, she gave this speech. Yeah, it was quite a speech. Um, you know, just kind of putting it all out out there. Artistry, artistry. But yeah, it was amazing. So. I don't know. It's just um, I have so many models, but those are probably top two. Those are those are great. Uh, are yeah, those are great. Uh, those are great role models. How hard is it for you as an actress to switch on and switch off? You know, different emotions. Christina. Yeah, I mean, everybody has their different mind. My. Hello? Yes, I'm here. Do you Can hear, you hear me? Do you, do you, I, could, I could hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you might want to just uh, stay still a little bit. Are you still? Uh, um, but no, it's that way of kind of doing things where I put. Is it good? Yes, I hear you. But yeah, I uh, had more roles recently where I kind of have to put get into this mindset of being very um, out of my mind, basically, you know, like really tough roles. Like, for example, the horror movie I just did, um, I was a psychiatric, you know, hospitalized patient. And yeah, I basically come out and um, have to 
I don't know, kind of just be in this mindset where I'm not used to it. You know, it's, um, very dark and very, um, twisted. And I don't, I just kind of put myself in that girl's head, you know, like what would she be thinking and how would she be feeling in this situation and just kind of build off that. Hmm. If you could, uh, if you could shape uh, a character of your own, what would she be like? Hmm. I would, if I could create my own character, I would definitely have her kind of arc in a way. I would, I want to show her softer side. I want to show, um, her more emotional side and I'd want to show like her harder side, you know? Hmm. And so I don't know. I, I've never really thought about it. If I could create my completely own character, but if I did, I definitely would want to see every side of her that I could. Why don't we talk about projects that you are currently working on? If you could share that with me in the audience. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the most recent that I just talked a little bit about, it's called Anders Manor. Um, it's a horror film and I filmed it in Rhode Island uh, in October. And it's basically about um, this girl, uh, who I play and, you know, she was in, um, psych psych psychiatric hospital and it's the whole movie basically takes place in one night. Um, the night that she gets out and it's very twisted. It's very, um, manipulative and emotional. So that was a, a tough, I was honestly probably the toughest role that I've had to play thus far. And, but I'm very happy about it. You know, I, I haven't seen it yet, um, but it's going to be coming out in about Mar March, I believe is what yes, we're looking it's a, at. It's my understanding that there's a March release. Yeah. And uh, it got picked up by Lionsgate. So that's wow. really exciting. Awesome. 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 Yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah. Any yeah other and I have a couple projects that um, I'm talking to producers about for this year that I can't really talk about yet, but uh, you know, new things coming up and I, I genuinely feel 2017 is going to be a great year for me. Well, will you do me a favor when you can't talk about these things that you can't talk about? Will you come back and will you call me and, and let me know you're ready to, you're ready to talk about it. Yeah. Oh. When you're, yeah. when you're ready, you'll let me know. I don't know. Okay. I'll honestly, I'll call you first. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, you, how about any, how about any interest in, uh, at this point in your career, do you have interest in producing and directing down the road? I do. Actually. Um, it's like growing up, like in front of the camera, I'm constantly surrounded by all these people who are behind the camera and I'm learning for me to them and um like the past couple films that I've done I've really analyzed and paid attention to the other side of the camera you know like the production side of it and the director's like vision for the film you know and how that's played out and it honestly interests me so much and that's what I do want to go um after I do my generals at Santa Monica City College I I really want to transfer into USC for their film program to focus more on directing and producing. Hmm. What's yeah. it, so what's it, what's it like? Uh, I mean, you know, Dexter, everything that's going on with you. Uh, I mean, you, you've got to be noticed when you're, when you're out there, what's that experience like? Yeah. I mean, I'm not noticed too much. Um, but, you know, when people do come up to me, it's, it's, it's humbling, you know, and it's, it makes me proud because it makes me kind of realize that I'm getting recognition for what I want to be doing, you know, and that's a really good feeling. Um, so, you know, I take it in stride and I try to talk to the fans that want to talk to me and take pictures with who wants to take pictures because, you know, I, I feel normal. I don't feel like I'm any above anybody else, you know, but I, I know exactly how these people are feeling who come up to me because I see people sometimes and I'm like, Oh my God, do you see who that is? Like, 
I love them on that show or little things like that, you know? So when you're not working, where do you like to, where do you like to hang out and with whom? Um, well, I live in Santa Monica. Um, and I live, I have my own apartment right next to the, um, Santa Monica pier. And so I hang out, um, on those beaches a lot. I hang out on the third street promenade and I go shopping a lot and, I don't know. I love, I love just going on road trips with friends. I really genuinely love travel. For example, I'm on a road trip right now. (laughs) Um, and I'm actually, it's so funny. I'm staying right now. Um, we found this place on Airbnb, which is where you can, you know, rent rooms and stuff from people for a couple nights or whatever. And it's called the Hobbit house. And it's basically this little Hobbit house in the backyard of somebody. And it's the cutest little thing. It's so cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So listen, uh, another spontaneous question I, I'm going to ask you. Um, uh, any boyfriends? <laughs> Actually, no. Um, there's not really a reason for that either. But uh, I actually haven't dated anybody. I'm open to it. But, you know, I'm pretty picky. I would I would think it's uh for someone like you, Christina Robinson, I would think it's pretty hard for you to find Mr. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is considering, you know, I'm still single. <laughs> I don't think that's the only the only reason. I think you uh you have an awful lot of power and have gained at nineteen years a- of age uh a lot of fame. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think you had, didn't you, in November, didn't you have the Sundance Festival? I actually am going to Sundance um, in next week. Oh, it's coming up next week already. It's coming up already next week. You know, you and I had the pleasure of connecting uh, someone that's become a new friend of mine, a great guy, uh, Josh Mitchell, the publicist of Wicked Piece of Publicity. Yeah, he's a, I hired him for, um, you know, Sundance week, so... He's been connecting me with a lot of cool people, and he does his job very well. You know, going back to fans, I mean, uh, you uh, a lot of a lot of uh, young generation looks up to you. You know, you inspire them and are a role model. I mean, you gotta mm-hmm. you gotta share with me. There's gotta be there's gotta be one story that's the weirdest thing a fan has ever done to you. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! And if you want to, and if you want to tell me too, you could go ahead and tell me too. Yeah, I'll definitely share. Go ahead. So, um, it was, a what was it? I think it was about two years ago, a year or two ago, I think. And I was out at dinner with friends and we were, um, sitting at this table and there's a woman sitting at the table next to us who just wouldn't stop staring at us, you know, and it was, um, getting very uncomfortable, but you know, we weren't saying anything cause we didn't, we didn't know what was, you know, in her mind. Um, And eventually, you know, during dinner, I got up to go to the restroom. And as I'm in the stall, in the women's restroom, (laughs) somebody knocks on my stall door. Like, it's not, okay, like, there's a bunch of different stalls in this bathroom. Somebody knocks on the stall door and is like, excuse me, like, I was like, hi, like, can I help you? And they were like, uh, she was just like, are you that girl on Dexter? And I'm literally in the stall, like, (laughs) In the bathroom. Oh, wow. And she was like, are you that girl on Dexter? And I was like, um, can you give me a minute? And she was like, I just, I just need to know real quick. And I was like, um, yeah. <laughs> but like, I was like, can you just let me be for a minute? <laughs> Unbelievable. How about another weird story? It's just weird. Um, let me think. I mean, I got sent um, this package of fan mail that was a, uh, real knife set and that was really weird hmm well listen i've yeah. got i've got to ask you over the years i mean you started acting at a very you know very early in your life you know mm-hmm. how has that made you different than your than your age peers that are in school with you yeah um i mean i like i said before it really kind of forced me to mature um at a very early age and i feel like I look at things a little bit differently than some people my age do. Um, I kind of look at the bigger picture and 
um, trying to better, you know, myself in a long-term type of way. And a lot of the people that I'm surrounded with, um, really are focusing on, you know, the, the parties and, um, short-term kind of happiness, you know? And so it does make it hard for me to kind of grasp on to the, you know, like people that I can benefit and that can benefit me, um, at this age. So, so I've got to ask, I've got to ask the other question that is at 19, at 19 years of age now, you know, you're already mature way beyond your years. Now, how has that affected your relationships with adults? Do, do adults treat you any differently? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I mean, I'm friends with adults. (laughs) adults. <laughs> like I, I have a couple of friends who are in their thirties and forties and we hang out and go to dinner and catch up, you know, and not a lot of my friends, my age, um, can do that. <laughs> so I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm very, you know, universal. Okay. So, uh, school, how, how do you, What's next with school, USC and school? Uh, How are you going to manage your time and fit all this in with with your career? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I'm doing community college right now, and I'm kind of having to work with my professors um, when I am filming and when I do have projects where I have to go out of town. Um, I'm having to really work with the schedule, you know, and do things on my computer, like outside of school. And so I, I, I genuinely don't know how, um, I'm going to balance everything. I'm kind of learning as I go. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it might work out and it might not. So I don't know. Okay. I got to ask you this, uh, when you were younger, when you were younger and today, Celebrity, right. celebrity crushes. Ooh. Hmm. When you were younger um, and today, celebrity right. crushes, who, they, who are they? I would say when I was younger, I would crush pretty hardcore on like, well, oh, um, what are they called? The, the Sprouts Brothers, like the sweet, you know, they were on the um, show Sweet Life with Zach and Cody. Wow. Wow. Yeah, when I was younger, my sister and I, because they were twins, my sister and I would like each pick one and then kind of just crush on them for a second. And now, I I don't really know if I have a celebrity crush because I don't know. I like I I just I don't know. I really don't. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. So uh, how about a little bit more about, uh, you know, I know you've had a love for, you know, your volunteering in Africa in the past. Uh, How about shedding some light on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to Africa um, in this coming, what is it, April. I'm going to be going there for um, 50 days. I'm teaching preschool and kindergarten to a small orphanage. Hmm. Um, Yeah, I'm very, very excited about that. And I I wish I was going tomorrow. (laughs) I'm already packed, basically. I Um, mean, you you give a lot. uh, You give you a lot to 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 kids. I mean, uh, you you love to you know you love to travel. You're heading to Zambia, Africa, in you know late March. Um, You're you're teaching six weeks uh, at a kindergarten. uh, You know, at an orphanage. You know, you raise funds for things that are needed by orphanages. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's almost like Christina Robinson can't wait for the next experience. I mean, your your uh, everything about you beyond uh, your years. I mean, besides your uh, just fabulous uh, creative talents in acting, whether it be singing. Sports, the traveling, uh, giving yourself to uh, um, to orphanages, kindergarten children, just uh, amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's like I, you know, was very privileged growing up, and you know, a lot of people aren't and don't have the opportunity to experience 
the, you know, things that I do. And so I just think, you know, why, why not give back? You know, it only makes you feel better and benefits others. So, you know, Christina, when I also launched this show, uh, I had a vision that if every single show that I do, if that show either with a guest or a format or both could, could impact one person in this world, uh, in a positive way, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be ecstatic th about that. And, uh, that's my, that's my goal for every single show. And I think, uh, the audience hearing, uh, our conversation, which is, uh, not really an interview, but try to have a conversation and, uh, here doing it from Long Island and you remotely over on the coast that, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, I think you're going to, uh, out, out, I think you're going to pass my goal of just one person. I think there's going to be um, a lot of uh, all demographics and all generations of people that uh, are going to write into me and call me and text and email me and really be affected in a very positive way by the young lady that I have on my show today. Thank you so much. That makes me really happy. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so is there anything, anything else that you would like to talk about that we haven't? Hmm. I know you love I to mean, travel. I don't know how you fit in all the traveling. Yeah, I mean, traveling is a huge part of what I love. I went to Fiji last year. Um, or what was it? Fiji two years ago, Panama last year, Europe last year, um, Africa this year. Um, you know, I just want to see the world. There's so much that we haven't seen. And even just a little road trip that people can do with their friends, you know, like somewhere else in their state or even just country that they are that, you know, just drive and see where you end up. For example, uh, my friend and I, who I'm traveling with right now, we were just driving down the coast and, um, we found this little stopping point. Like we had heard about it, but we didn't know where it was. We found this little stopping point and there was like this breeding ground for elephant seals. And there was like a thousand of them and they, they were just right in front of us. And it was just, and it was sunset and it was just so awe inspiring, you know, like what the world has to offer us, you know, we just really have to take it in stride and give back. I mean, what was that experience last summer with your sister, with your twin sister, Courtney, uh, that you had a, that you had a chance to uh, spend all last summer backpacking in Europe and exploring uh, just beautiful places in that part of the world? And, uh, yeah. you know, you met a lot of interesting people. Yeah, that was honestly one of the best times of my life. You know, I'm traveling with my sister, who's my best friend. I'm seeing the world and we're experiencing something new every single day. We're meeting new people from all across the globe every single day. We were staying at hostels. We were taking the trains everywhere. And my gosh, all I can do is recommend it to everybody. You learn so much about yourself and you learn so much about the world. And there's, I mean, really there's nothing negative about it. So I've got to ask you, what is it? I know this is going to be, if I'm correct, it's going to be your third year at the Sundance Film Festival. What mm -hmm. is, what is, what's it like being at the Sundance Film Festival? What's that experience like? It's very busy. <laughs> um, there's so many different events and you're meeting so many people from, you know, this film industry. Um, and, you know, a big part of Sundance is the connections that you make, you know, because you can always try to, you know, help somebody else with their project or, um, you know, ask for somebody's help. And it's just like everyone's kind of flowing off each other to, you know, build up this industry that everyone's in, you know. So I don't know. There's so many really great films that you get to watch as well. And, um, it's just, I don't know. It's an amazing time. That's why I keep going back. So what's next for you? In a sense of just, just, in general. I'm just throwing it just in general, however you want to answer it. What's next? What's next is more films and more travel. Okay, cool, cool. Yep. And how about, how about one or two, once again, uh, one or two more favorite actors that you love? Mm, 
Leonardo DiCaprio. Cool. Good one. Love him. And yeah, he's great. And oh, um, Mark Wahlberg. Oh, great. Great actor. Great actor. Uh, how yes. about how about if you could have your dream role tomorrow? What would it be? Oof. Maybe something like something out of the box. So something maybe like the Hunger Games, you know, like a role that is just very out there. Hmm. So. Well, listen, uh, this has been a terrific show, and I want to thank you very much for taking time from your busy schedule. And, uh, you know, I've gotten to know mom, Carol, a little bit, and now I can understand that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> that so uh, your mother, uh, a special, special lady, and uh, I've invited her to uh, come on a, a future show. I'd love to have her. And I hope you extend uh, the invite as well to your sister, Courtney. Dad is even welcome. He must be a special guy. So... Uh, <laughs> whole family going absolutely and uh you know i want you to know that uh, one of my formats that i'm starting is uh, what i call on the dean blackman show is a younger generation uh types of shows like i'm doing with you and mm -hmm. uh it could be the younger generation it could be not just in the creative arts and film it could be sports it could be writing it could be speaking, it could be anything, but I, uh, I very much want to have shows that have a format like what we're doing today, where it's younger generation, and uh, it could be shows that uh, if it's, uh, it doesn't just have to be one-on-one -on -one like we're doing today. We could have other uh, young generation people participate either here in studio or through remote it could be uh it could be a few people uh participating on the show so i want to tell my audience that this unbelievable experience i'm having with this uh incredible young lady that's unbelievably gifted uh, a remarkable young lady christina robinson that if there's anybody that would like to come on the show um that uh you're welcome to to, to come on and uh, I just want to thank you very much again for all the time that you gave today. And I really, I really appreciate it. No, it was my pleasure. It was great talking to you. And I, I want to wish you uh, a belated happy and a healthy new year. And I want to wish you uh, nothing but uh, future uh, great success and most important, uh, the best of health. Thank you. Same to you, truly. And I hope I hope you enjoyed this experience on my show. I did. It was fun. Good. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Okay. So on that note, I'm going to close out the show. Uh, I want to hear from all our listeners. Listeners can reach out to us for, with the free text number for U.S. residents. It's 631-372-8849. That's 631-372-8849. We'd love to hear from all of you. Please include your name and location, and we will mention you on the show. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and to hit the subscribe button on the show's YouTube channel. If you'd like to leave a comment, use the box below. I'm also glad to hear to, to mention that we are now on the iTunes platform that Christina's show will be archived and podcasted and available not just on YouTube, on the show's YouTube channel, but on the Dean Blackman Show iTunes platform, along with uh, the Dean Blackman Show website. If you'd like to share your story, any ideas, and be a guest on the show, go to DeanBlackman.com and email me directly. I would like to thank all my listeners for being with us today. From all of us at the Dean Blackman Show, have a great day. You've been listening to the Dean Blackman Show live from Long Island, New York. From all of us here, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. We look forward to hearing your comments via Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and email. And don't forget, you can visit the webpage anytime for the up-and-coming guest list. From all of us here, have a good evening.